How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you and today we are going to be talking about UTIs. Yes, it's not a completely sexy topic or an interesting one or even that exciting, but I think um, learning about what recurrent UTIs mean and how to prevent them is very important as from a public health standpoint um, for those who watch my videos and you'll get to learn a little bit more about a very very boring thing that happens to most people. So if you don't know what a UTI is, a UTI stands for urinary tract infection. Um, I believe that almost everybody in the entire world has had a UTI at some point in their life. If you've never had one, congratulations. You're one of the very few lucky ones out there. UTIs can be very painful. What happens is that there's a bacteria gets introduced into the urethra, the canal where you pee from. And uh, when bacteria enters that area, it can cause burning, it causes damage to the tissues around it, and it sort of makes peeing very, very painful for a lot of people. Now, even though I have said that most people, most of y'all who watch this video have had a UTI at some point, UTIs tend to be very rare in someone's life. So when we define something as a recurrent UTI, which means someone who has more UTIs than normal, we define it as someone who's had a UTI at least three times within the past year or twice in the past six months. So um, if you are having more than one UTI every year, uh, it might be a good idea to learn about tips to prevent UTIs and if it still keeps on happening, it's time for a medical evaluation. So today we're going to be covering things to do to prevent a recurrent UTIs and when to go see a doctor if the things that you're doing in the first part that we cover isn't working and things that you should consider when you do go see your doctor. Ooh, and before I jump into the things that you should be doing to prevent UTIs and to make sure you, you have as few UTIs as possible, I know a lot of you are probably thinking about things like uh, cranberry juice um, for UTI prevention or cranberry pills. One thing that I want to emphasize with cranberry juice if you do have symptoms of UTI and you want to take care of it at home is that um, get one with a higher cranberry concentrate, one that's pure Cranberry, if you go out to the store and get cranberry juice, it's probably a lot of sugar, water, and not a lot of cranberries. The reason why cranberry juice works is because there is an active ingredient in cranberries, a chemical compound that's uh, known to make your, your, your urinary canals more slippery for bacteria so they can't stick to it, which prevents the UTI. So another thing that you might know is that if bacteria is already stuck in your urethral walls, uh, cranberry juice might not work as well, but it is worth a shot, it's cheap, and you don't have to go see a doctor, but make sure you get a higher concentration, and if you have persistent symptoms still, please, please, please go see a doctor to have that checked out. Also, in addition to cranberry juice, things like vitamin C can acidify the urine a little bit uh, and when it does that it's more um, it has more properties to kill bacteria because it's slightly acidic but uh, research has time and time and show uh, shown again that cranberry juice yes in hindsight it does seem like it's promising but it doesn't work uh, clinically in many different settings because it's just it's just up in the air uh, the quality of cranberry juice in the market is all over the place. So today we're going to look at some tried and true things that you can do. So if you're watching this video and you've been like, oh my God, I get more than two UTIs every six months or more than three UTIs a year, I probably should watch this video. And um, these are the tips I'm going to be talking about that we know for a fact that can help you with uh, UTI management. One, if you are someone who is sexually active, you got a boyfriend, a girlfriend or a day friend um, that you have uh, fun times with <laughs> in the PM hours, um, if you notice that your UTIs come back every time after uh, happy fun time hours, it could be that you should start peeing after happy fun time hours. So after you have a happy fun time hour, uh, go to the bathroom and uh, pee. It, what that does is that any bacteria that's introduced during uh, sexual intercourse uh, gets flushed out after you pee. So that is a huge benefit uh, to peeing after having any form of intercourse. And number two is if you notice that you only get UTIs after intercourse, then you're getting them pretty frequently, it might be a great idea to talk to your a doctor about po postcoital antibiotics. 
It's a very, very fancy term, but postcoital means after having sex. And what you do is the doctor prescribes you a bunch of antibiotics, but you only take it after having sex. So after having intercourse, you take the antibiotic and it kills any bacteria that may be introduced into your urethral canals, which prevents uh, a UTI from developing. So this is a really, really great option for those who notice that I, yes, I get UTIs a lot, but only after I have sex and I've been peeing after sex and it doesn't really seem to help, you can definitely benefit from postcoital antibiotics. It is definitely a conversation you should have with your doctor if you are watching this video and have noticed that this, yo, this sounds a lot like me. Some other tips that are super, super important when it comes to prevention of UTIs is that if you notice um, that you wear a lot of tight bottoms, if you wear uh, that are not well aerated, there's not a lot of uh, air passing through, um, what happens is that sometimes the vaginal folds can compress together and allow bacteria to flourish in the area causing UTIs. So make sure if you are wearing tight clothes, you don't wear it for too long and that uh, you allow the downstairs region to breathe a little bit in the day. Another thing you should be aware of is that taking baths can introduce UTIs to the urinary tract because you're going to be on standing water and standing water is our buzzword in medical school for anything bacteria or parasite related if we are on standard standing water we uh we might we are always susceptible to bacterial infections so things like bats can um introduce bacteria because of the standing water property but another thing that you should be aware of is holding your pee because your bladder is holding standing water when you hold your pee in. So the longer you hold your pee, the more you just have water with bacteria circling around in your body and it gives the bacteria every opportunity to latch onto your walls and cause a UTI. We also see this a lot with older cisgender men who have um, like their prostate gets enlarged. They have um, benign prostatic hyperplasia, which just means it's just a fancy term for a bigger prostate. Uh, what ends up happening is that prostate pushes against the urethral canal, which leads to bladder retention of urine, and then that causes standing water to develop in your bladder, and that is fertile ground for bacteria that want to eat away at your canals. And the last thing I want to mention, and I know, I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh my God, you're talking about this. This is so common, so basic, but not a lot of people do it, is that you should always, always, when cleaning down there, wipe front to back. Don't do back to front. Don't do front to back, come back and do another swipe of front to back. No, you are introducing the same back bacteria to the front. So one swipe down from front to back, throw away that sheet of tissue and then get another sheet of tissue and do front to back. Or if you're like me, who recently in the last year discovered the wonders of a bidet, uh, you can just wash your nether regions with a bidet and then dry from front to back. And there you go. We have created a very, very awesome environment um, for protection against bacteria that can latch into our canals and cause um, pain when we pee. Now let's move on to part two of this video and that is, hey Ben, you've talked about all these methods. I've been peeing after after sex, but for some reason I get, I get UTIs whether or not I'm sexually active. I get them all the time. I don't know why this is going on. And like, please tell me what to do. I'm, I've been doing everything that you mentioned in this video. I even pee frequently. I don't hold in my pee. Well, this is when I would strongly suggest telling your family doctor, hey, doc, I get all of these UTIs. I'm doing all of these personal hygiene things and none of it's working. And what should I do? So that's when your doctor can be a part of your team to refer you to maybe someone like a specialist, like a urologist. What we, we, urologists will do is they will look at your canals uh, that pass urine through uh, things like CTs and other imaging and see if there's any anatomical variations that might make you more susceptible to bacteria entering your canals. This is very, uh, it's something that's often not talked about, but many people are actually born with slight variations in their canals. There might be a little nick here, a nick there. Some people might have it look um, entering in different places and all of those little different variations can actually 
uh, make someone susceptible to U UTIs more frequently. Another thing I really want to emphasize is that yes, you might be at a point in your life where you're having more recurrent UTIs, but um, eventually most people will no longer have them as frequently. It just depends on our vibes. I don't know why we're like this, but I remember um, back in my early 20s, I got UTIs a lot more frequently. I would get them like once every six months. And now I think in the last three years, I haven't had a single UTI. And it might have to do with the fact that I drink a lot more water and I use the bathroom more frequently. But at the same time, it's just like, sometimes our body is just like, yo, I feel like this year I'm gonna have a lot more UTIs and just makes us susceptible to it. Now, if you're going to a point where your UTIs are so, so unbearable, you're getting them so, so frequently, your doctor can put you on a maintenance antibiotic uh, prophylaxis. So what you do is you take a low dose antibiotic for at least a couple of months, sometimes up to a year, for more severe cases up to two years and you'll be taking this antibiotic to prevent any UTIs from forming and most patients we see either uh, have a complete remission of having um, frequent UTIs or if they do have it it's a normal frequency but there is a small amount of people who have a recurrence of symptoms and they realize that after taking these month-long antibiotics their UTIs aren't going away and they might need to start a second dose of the regimen and probably a referral to a urologist to uh, have it checked out. But for the vast majority of people, the main reason why we get frequent re-UTIs is the fact that uh, we need to pro have better hygiene practices. And two, some of us for a short amount of time might need to get on antibiotics. Some of us for a short amount of time might need to take antibiotics after having sexy fun times um, just so that our bodies can Re, uh, reconfigure ourselves. Anyways, I know this was a lot of information, but I think it can benefit a lot of people. I have friends who have frequent UTIs and they just don't go to a doctor and they deal with the pain. But my emphasis is that if you are, if you're fitting the criteria for persistent UTIs, you should absolutely go see a doctor and either get antibiotics or a referral to a urologist to get further testing to see if why am I getting this? Because nobody, nobody should be in pain when they're doing something so intimate. Um, and it's something that is treatable for a lot of people. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I hope you learned something from it. I hope you gained some valuable information. I hope you'll share this video with someone that may benefit from this information. Follow me on Instagram to keep up with my activism work, my med, med school, no, nope, my residency shenan shenanigans. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.